Hello, good afternoon. Welcome, welcome. Going to wait about 20 more seconds, let people get settled in and connected to audio. Right. Great. So let's get started. Um, I'd like to thank the audience for joining our webinar today. Part one of our two part data, data dialogue series, the roadmap to S4 HANA, plan, prep and execute. I'm Miranda Burke and I'm the senior marketing manager here at SMP and your host. Today's 30 minute webcast is being recorded and all registrants will be sent the link to the recording and presentation. You have the flexibility to adjust the screen size and you can find that expand button right in the middle of your screen directly below the speaker boxes. Now, the nature of our data dialogue webinar series is us diving into a variety of topics related to SAP data transformation and data management projects. We're putting a twist on the data discussions and getting away from the dry topics. So please feel comfortable asking questions in the chat function, participating in our poll questions and the survey at the end. So now grab some coffee, tea, energy drink, and let's have fun, let's dive right in. So to start us off today, I am going to launch a poll question. There we go. We'll just give it a couple couple seconds here. So how long can it take to migrate to S4? We've got six to 12 months, one to two years, three to five years, more than five years, or it depends. Feel free to submit your answer. Give it about a couple more seconds. All right, closing this down. Let's share the results. So interesting. A lot of a lot of folks said six to twelve month time frame. Okay. Well, with that, to introduce my expert for today, Darren Shaw, and he is our VP of Marketing. So with that, Darren, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you very much, Miranda, and thank you everyone uh, who is joining us today. So uh, I'm going to just kick this off um, with a brief overview of who we are for those who are not aware. Uh, we are a German-based yet global software company dedicated to the uh, clients of SAP worldwide. Uh, we were founded in 1994, about 14 to 1500 uh, resources. Uh, we focus on data, specifically SAP data, um, and that data involvement with projects like uh, divestitures, systems consolidations, mergers and acquisitions, data archiving, migrations to S4, moves to the cloud, and any combination thereof. Uh, we have completed over 14,000 projects worldwide. Uh, we are an uh, been a longtime SAP partner, SAP certified with regard to integration with S4 HANA. Um, our software has been audited not only in its development but output uh, by independent auditors, uh, Pricewaterhouse Coopers and Ernst & Young. And most recently, we have uh, completed uh, six RISE with SAP projects with 18 actively going on. Next slide, please. Why is RISE relevant? Well, uh, most people are aware of the RISE with SAP campaign. It's a very important campaign, um, I think a very necessary campaign um, to get companies onto their clean digital core in the cloud so that they can achieve the digital transformation benefits uh, that have been touted, whether that's um, transformation of supply chain, um, HR, service management, uh, name a functional area, and there are uh, 
myriad benefits um, that are waiting out there to transform the back office uh, in light of the changes in strategy and execution uh, in terms of what uh, the new business will look like uh, being, you know, quote unquote, digital. Um, it's also uh, in line with the uh, projected uh, shutdown of support for ECC, specifically uh, Enhancement Pack 6, 7, and 8. If you're running ECC, uh, we've all heard of this date, 12-31-2027. Uh, what some people are not aware of is that if you're running an earlier version of SAP, and there are, believe it or not, a number of running 4.6c versions out there, ECC 5, uh, and everything in, in between. If you're running ECC without any enhancement pack or only enhancement pack uh, one through five, uh, your deadline is a lot sooner. It's two years sooner. Um, so just as a, you can see the clock below here, there are uh, 1,515 days until um, shutdown of support for ECC six, enhancement pack six or, or over. Now, what does that mean, okay? SAP has moved the date once, uh, maybe even twice. But if you think about um, historical timelines to implement a full SAP system, depending upon the size of the company, depending upon the global footprint, depending upon um, the nature of the regulatory environment, uh, implementation times, particularly Greenfield, have been anywhere from three to 10 years. There are some companies out there who have never finished. Uh, if you look on average, it's about five years. Um, and typically those projects included um, you know, business process uh, re-engineering or business process transformation um, from an early days uh, definition, which means that you know five years on average, if you look at today's date and the shutoff uh, of 2027, uh, some companies may already be behind in terms of getting uh, to that digital core, you know, getting that upgrade to, uh, to S4 HANA. You're way, way behind if you're running on an earlier version, as I've, as I've already said. Why is this relevant? Um, there are a lot of people still touting Greenfield, which may certainly be appropriate if you are a company running uh, multiple versions of 4.6C on an, on an AS400. Um, that is not always necessary and there are certainly other options besides a full greenfield which puts companies at risk uh, given some of these timelines uh, next slide please so um there um, there is a belief that if you're going to go to s4 you're going to have to implement uh process changes uh, in order to make that effort to go to S4 HANA worthwhile. So um, that certainly sounds good, but just here is one example, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick on supply chain, right? So if you look at supply chain, and uh, granted, this is a, a bit of a year old, but uh, 2023 has not changed all that considerably. You hear a lot about operational resilience, right? That's one of the hallmarks of being a digital organization, uh, the second one most often used um, is being a um, data-driven decision-making organization. So if you look at you know, the peak of inflated expectations, supply chain resiliency is right at the top, right about to go over that, um, that roller coaster, uh, you know, highest peak that we all like to fling down. But in the case of the, uh, the hype cycle, going down that hill is not fun. Uh, it hits that trough of, of disillusionment. So you'll see a lot of this uh, supply chain benefits that have been touted. Um, it's it's not there yet. So what do you say, right? Supply chain being uh, such a critical part of uh, of, of operations. Um, this is an area that is not quite ready. So what do you do? Well, uh, do you wait another couple of years until uh, supply chain resiliency is, you know, out of the trough of disillusionment? And uh, by the way, you can take this same hype cycle and you can apply technologies like AI, which you hear about every other day in commercials, uh, not just related to SAP, but everything. Uh, AI is also uh, not necessarily ready for prime time. So, um, 
you know, do you wait for everything to be ready? Well, you can't because time is ticking per those dates I showed you on the prior slide. Um, but if you're running a highly customized SAP environment, an older SAP environment, if you're running multiple disparate environments, that's going to add a lot of extra effort to get you to that you know, so-called clean core and to be even ready for AI, be even ready for true uh, supply chain resiliency across the entire organization. Um, so what do you do? Do you stop and not do anything? No, because um, inaction is just as bad as uh, action taken prematurely. But uh, there are benefits that can be had without going through an entire um, process redefinition uh, process digital uh, di digitalization, excuse me, that's a mouthful. So um, to talk about what the other options are, uh, is my friend and colleague, Jeff Law, who is the Central Region Sales and Solutioning Executive. So uh, Jeff, over to you. Awesome, thanks, Darren. You bet. Let me move these slides forward here a little bit. Um, I think you're right, though, in what you kind of brought up in, on a couple of previous slides. You need to understand how that timeline for SAP to end their support for ECC and how you approach upgrading to S4 is very important. And then along with that, you know, companies are looking to take advantage of the automation, analytics, expand their AI. But if they're doing so without outdated or disparate system, it's, it's going to be very difficult to actually have that come to fruition. You need to get to a, a, a starting point. And if SAP is your ERP of choice, it needs to be S4, and it needs to be an efficiently configured system and landscape that you can scale the technologies from there and bring in more process improvements, but it's off of that strong starting point, right? Switching to the slide here, um, I, I think we've heard out in the market that there isn't enough value from a cost perspective to make the move to S4 or make sense for customers all the time. Obviously, there's caveats to that and, and things that we've seen from a wrong decision standpoint that could lead that to be true. But if it's addressed correctly, customers can reduce costs and set themselves up for success with future enhancements and transformations. I think right off the bat, you know, technical debt should be addressed. If not, you're essentially compounding a mistake and the cost of that will continue to rise both on HANA and in the cloud. Along with that, you know, hearing old data, um, it's not being accessed, it's not needed anymore. That again has carrying costs associated with it. Um, and those are gonna continue to limit your ability to get value from an S4 HANA migration. Not only the data, but read-only systems that are rarely accessed but kept also add to the license fees associated with your, your landscape. And there's alternatives for those systems that can programmatically decommission them and introduce cost savings at the same time. And then lastly, just to cover one of those bottom points there, we talked about how customers want to get to a clean core and take advantage of process improvements and advancements in automation. But if you don't define a path to consolidate where it makes sense, you're again, just juggling too many disparate systems and you won't be able to see the true value across the business because it's minimized and siloed to those specific areas. We'll keep things moving. Um, you know, what can you do as you begin to plan your migration to S4, I think they might sound like basic, um, you know, simple questions and, and, and topics to raise and address as a business, but you know, starting with the goals, short, medium, long-term, you know, what would digital transformation look like for your business? Then also, how is your SAP system currently being used? Do you have an efficient and risk-free way to understand where the data is being generated for your business? How do you know where the value is being generated or can be generated or the data that you actually need to run your business if you don't understand how you're using your system, right? It's, it's, it's good to have that kind of baseline and foundational knowledge of, hey, this is how we're using it and this is what we do moving forward. Getting back to standard and, and customization, I think comes up often with customers and it needs to be you know, thought through early from a couple different angles. You know, how far are you from standard? what business task or, or issue is being solved by that customization, who is that impacting or what is it impacting, right? Is there a path that you can get to standard um, that you can utilize? As I said, customization, it's, it's brought up a lot, 
and being able to know where that customization sits in your system, what it means for your business, rather than just, hey, here's the tables, here's the transactions it's associated with, it's important, right? There needs to be the context for the scenario to help you make the decisions that will help you in the future and ensure that you're getting value from that customization. And if you're not, then being able to remove it, right? And just get it out of your system and get back to a process that's gonna help you moving forward. Moving down the slide, you know, what processes must change and then what can wait and be a part of the strategic plan to transform once you're already live on S4 and have a clean core. I think there's a line in the sand where adding more transformation, creating complexities within the project, introducing more change, it might not make sense for either the time and costs associated with doing those things. And you need to understand then, you know, what are the minimum transformations to get to S4? users, you know, the timeline, the cost, et cetera. And then, you know, how the data fits into those potential transformations, I think is also a crucial piece to that equation that, that shouldn't be ignored. Lastly, um, you know, are there other competing activities that the business has that will compete with either resources or the budget available for the S4 project? You know, perhaps the business's goals or processes or needs to be structured in the future. You know, can those things be planned for in advance and make the future steps easier from a change management perspective? How far can you be looking ahead? And are there things already in motion in other areas of the business that you should look to factor in or consider? I get I just rattled off a lot of questions, but I think they're, they're follow-ups to basic ideas and topics that should be discussed kind of early and often in your planning and strategy phases to make sure you're kind of off on the right foot. I think it's important um, for customers to remember that they still have options, right? And they maintain the control when it comes to deciding how they want to get to S4 HANA. They are not tied to one concrete way to get the project completed. I think once you understand first the requirements and mandatory items to be able to migrate to S4 and subsequently run their business at the point of go live, and then second, understand all the variations that they have to create value within their project, it's at that point that you can decide, okay, this is the best approach for the customer's unique scenario. There can be a advice coming from a lot of different directions, right? You can talk to other customers, you can talk to um, SIs, us as SP, SAP, everybody will be happy to, to help and, and kind of guide you towards that final decision. But as a customer, you still have those options and you still have the ability to decide what the best path is for you and your business. I think there's an assumption often from the customer that it has to be this long and challenging process to get to S4. You have to take on a ton of risk with a limited value for the investment that you're making at that point in time. But if you look at the top line shown on this slide, there's multiple steps or items that can also be opportunities to remove risk from your selected approach, right? There's the ability to shorten the timeline associated with completing all these tasks if you strategically combine them. We've got several listed. Do you have to combine everything? No, of course not. But you can plan on what's most crucial to your business and strategically combine those items into the same S4 Go Live. And then with those complete and your business is on S4 and say six, nine, 12 months, from there you can begin to build on that solid foundation with additional transformations. But you're doing so while you benefit from being already on S4 HANA with an efficient system that isn't carrying all the old technical debt or waste that it previously had on ECC. I think just in general, a takeaway from this slide, I think it's important to remember that if you favor the linear kind of multiple project approach that addresses each requirement to get to S4 individually, you're likely draining resources, you're disrupting the business in some capacity each time, you're extending the timeline and delaying the value ultimately that you're trying to achieve, right? But if you can bring that into two major steps, so the preparation piece, and then a single project combining the transformation to get to S4 HANA, it doesn't have to be a long drawn out process and program across several years. I wanna take a quick second just to, to talk a little bit about some bar experiences and work with customers across industries. 
I think a benefit from a software-based approach is that it can fit a myriad of requirements in different types of customers, right? It's important to us that we talk with the customers about what is possible and what those options are at their disposal, and then we tackle whatever it is they're aiming to accomplish with their data and be able to meet those unique needs. I think it's reflected by the cross-industry experience you see with these customers, you know, there's ability to apply learnings to many industries in many scenarios. We've got selective migrations, we've got harmonizations listed, moves to S4, we're handling multiple systems as well as industry solutions, right? So there's just a lot of possibilities for the customers to get to where they need to be with their data, um, which I think is it's it's good to bring the software and the automation into that to, to allow those customers customers to meet those needs. I think just to try to kind of wrap up things from you know, content and slide perspectives for any questions, you know, the move to S4 doesn't need to be full of risk or spread across a timeline that puts you up against the so-called clock. I know that Darren's slide had the, the countdown going, right, that SAP's initiated with the end of their support. But if you plan your approach, you have a vision for what you want your final state to be, you identify the requirements and opportunities to improve your system to get to that desired state, and then address those identified areas of your system and your business that need to be you know, improved while combining the transformations where possible, you'll have an approach that's unique to your needs and efficient in getting you to S4 HANA. When it comes to what SMP can do within that process, I think as a starter, we want to take a look at your system with you and have a discussion about what it means in the S4 context via our Crystal Bridge scan and analysis component, right? We're happy to dive deeper into industry expertise, use cases with customers, and showcase kind of demonstrating how our software is utilized when transforming the data. And that gives you then a little bit of an idea how we work with customers, the types of projects, and what you can expect. Um, we've got our contact information listed. I know we've moved pretty quickly through this, but you know, feel free to reach out if there's additional questions or you want to set up time to meet. Um, but I want to thank everybody for you know taking a few minutes out of their day to, um, to to join us. So with that, Miranda, I think I'll pass it back to you um, or Darren for any other final points and, and kind of wrap up steps for folks. That's great, uh, Jeff, great, great presentation. So as I pull up questions from the audience, I am going to launch one final poll question today. So let me launch this. And yes, it is the same question we asked at the beginning of the presentation, but we wanna know if your answer has changed or, or stayed the same. We are interested in hearing from the audience. So feel free to submit your answer. I'll just give it a couple seconds here. Excellent. Couple more seconds. See some good answers coming in. I have a hunch how this may turn out. <laughs> All right. I am going to close that and I am going to share the results. Ooh. What you predicted, Jeff, Karen? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Okay. Excellent. Well, team, I know we covered a lot of information in 30 short minutes, actually 24 minutes to be exact. So don't worry, we'll be sending the PowerPoint and the recording via email. Additionally, I'll include any other resources such as blog posts and success stories you can peruse at your leisure. Please follow our social media handles and you can see all the updates on our events and sessions we're hosting in North America. And as I close out the webinar, you'll be prompted for a very quick survey. It is three questions. Just please let us know um, how we did today. And with that, Are there any questions, Miranda? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I... oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello here. Actually, yes, we do have one from the audience. Okay. What typically contributes to extended migration or transformation timelines? Uh, okay, um, a number of things, uh, and I'll just throw off a couple, and then Jeff, please, uh, please chime in. But I, I think a lot of it is um, a very, very large scope, 
if they want to move to uh, S4 and do a ton of process transformation up front when it may not necessarily be required, that can certainly add to the timeline. I think um, thinking about data and data quality as an afterthought, while that sounds terribly boring, you know, it's not as flash as, you know, product lifecycle management, but at the end of the day, uh, it's data and organizational change management that brings projects to a grinding halt. Um, at least that that's what, what what we found in speaking with a lot of our a lot of our clients. And I think a lot of that, uh, a lot of, I guess the a lot of that is also aligned with maybe um, um, historical thinking. Um, I'll say, whereas people believe that they've got to do everything in a sequential linear fashion, um, which was a safe way to do it. And that's how everyone did it, you know, a, a, a while ago. So there's no, you know, I'm not poking fun at that, but when there's other technologies available to get away with that, um, you can save a lot of time just getting to that clean core and then embarking on a timeline that makes sense for you uh, operationally, culturally, um, to do all the process work. But if you can at least get to that core, that, that cloud-based clean core, as soon as possible, you now have a ton of time for uh, pilots that make sense, you know, pilots that will have, a, uh, have an ROI. Um, but you can take the TCO savings that we've you know, alluded to here and invest that in the functional pilots, you know, going forward. That's going to really, really bring you uh, bring you those those benefits. Uh, Jeff, any any other thoughts? I I think you hit the nail on the head pretty well. The things that jump to mind for me are, are you know trying to make too many process changes, right? I think we call it boiling the ocean and, and trying to figure out, hey, what are the the key areas to focus on and weave that into your project. Um, and then I think the other thing is uh, people not being aware, right? The, the, the lack of awareness that it is possible. So I think the more conversations we have with customers and we kind of unearth some of those possibilities and, and educate, I, I think that helps. But I think there is the, the mindset that it needs to be a long time and a, a long timeline. So um, that's just another kind of battle that you face in the market. I think that ed the education piece is very important. A lot of people think, well, gee, you know, we've, we've, we've got to act now and then they'll act on on what they know. It pays to, you know, here we are talking about speed, yet at the same time we're saying, take the time up front and educate yourself on what is possible. And then depending upon if you buy into that or not, okay, then that can may put you in a different direction, but at least take the time to understand what's out there as opposed to assuming that the old way is the only way. Yeah, know your options and then figure out how you want to pull those in. Um, and just be pretty strategic in those decisions, knowing that each time you add more and more and more, you're you're gonna um, extend that time on a little bit. Right. Anything else, Miranda, from anyone out there? Um, nothing else from the audience today. Okay. We got off light. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, again, we'd like to thank the audience for joining today. Um, stay tuned to a follow-up email with all the additional assets and uh, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Jeff and Darren, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Darren. Bye. Bye.